16th century Scottish King James IV considered himself a man of taste, dedicated to the awakening of knowledge that was sweeping Renaissance Europe. He spared no expense, trying to make his court a cultural center of the new age. Unfortunately, James turned out to be a pretentious spendthrift and was soon to be taken for a fool. Nothing was too expensive to create the image James wanted. To celebrate his marriage, the king gave every member of his court expensive new clothes. The chief cook's outfit alone cost almost a thousand dollars. James was pleased with his ostentation, but the royal treasurer had headaches trying to balance the budget on an accounting device called the Exchequer Board. The treasurer warned the king he was running low on money. Rather than modify his lavish lifestyle, James turned to one of his passions, the newly fashionable interest in chemistry. At the same time, an Italian alchemist named John de Falaise Damien arrived at the Scottish court. He told James he had the answer to all his problems. Through much travel and experimentation, Damien declared he was within reach of discovering the material that would turn metal into gold. He also claimed it had the added benefit of being the key to eternal life. King James was impressed and set Damien up in a laboratory at Stirling Castle. He instructed his beleaguered treasurer to furnish Damien with all the money and supplies he needed. Damien's requests soon poured in. Item, the 13th of October. For a skin of wine to make the quintessence, six pounds. Besides wine, Damien also asked for borax, quicksilver, and, most importantly, large quantities of aqua vita, more commonly known as whiskey. Consulting ancient texts, Damien mixed and blended and heated and cooled the ingredients. But the magical potion eluded him. The Italian alchemist couldn't produce the quintessence. The king wasn't bothered, for he enjoyed the charming Damien as a companion. Ignoring his quest for the magic potion, Damien spent much of his time playing cards with the king. The king, however, was not a good card player. Item. That night, six pounds and twelve shillings to play cards with the alchemist Damien. Members of the royal court began to complain about Damien. Rather than making the king rich, he was taking James's money at every opportunity. And Damien still couldn't come up with the potion to turn metal into gold. As Damien's confidence grew, his greed became outrageous. He constantly borrowed money from James and never bothered to repay the loans. The king's weary treasurer had to record... Item, lent by the king's command to the alchemist Damien, and cannot be gotten from him. Thirty-three pounds, six and eight pence. The huge quantities of aqua vita Damien ordered for his experiments were going straight down his throat instead of into the alchemist's crucible. His experiments were actually distillation to make his whiskey stronger. The buzz in the Scottish court finally made King James realize Damien was little more than an alcoholic charlatan. The king ordered his treasurer to cut off Damien's payments. With his fortunes at their lowest ebb, Damien insisted on one last chance to prove his magic powers. He confidently announced that he could fly. He would prove it by flying from Stirling Castle to Paris the following Sunday. When the great day dawned, a crowd of eager spectators gathered to witness the world's first manned flight. 
Meanwhile, Damien was in his laboratory, gluing feathers on his flying machine and fortifying himself for the coming ordeal. When all was complete and ready, Scotland's first birdman presented himself to the crowd gathered below. He began to flap his wings faster and faster. Damien's attempt at flight ended a few yards from the castle walls. He broke his leg, but was otherwise unhurt. Luckily, the alchemist had landed in a soft heap of stinking dung. Damien's fall from grace now seemed certain, but he had a ready explanation for the failed flight. He insisted chicken feathers had been mistakenly mixed in with eagle feathers. Since chickens prefer the dung heap to the blue sky, the flight had been doomed to failure. King James was completely satisfied with Damien's bird-brained explanation and welcomed his favorite wizard back to the royal court.